Kimberly, I feel like maybe I answered that question. How realistic is it for a person to transition into this role while holding a full-time job? Kimberly, it's either you're on or off. Um, so you can't really say, I'm going to work full-time at, you know, at the office, whatever it is I'm doing, and then I'm going to try to be an adjuster on nights and weekends. Um, kind of can do it um, if you do photo and scope locally, but it depends on where you live. Uh, so it makes it challenging, right? If you live in North Dakota, um, maybe not. If you live in Atlanta, maybe they've got like photo and scope stuff, you can app based stuff that you can do nights and weekends, turn on, turn off, right? Kind of a thing. Um, but it's, it's a little bit of a challenge. So we've got a bunch of uh, damage ID stuff in Adjuster TV Plus. There's some, a couple of, at least one series in there for that. But you can get these books from Haig that will teach you everything that you need to know about it. They'll show you what damage is, uh, what it isn't, right? So table of contents for this particular book is manufacturing and installation issues. Uh, weathering anomalies, inclu including granular loss, flaking, buckling, algae, and lichens, splitting, uh, hail and wind damage, and mechanical damage. So it's going to cover all that stuff in this little like picture book. You, they have digital PDF versions of these as well. But it'll show you stuff that you might mistake for hail, right? And say, well, that's not actually hail, that's something else, right? That's a manufacturing defect or an installation issue, right? Um, and it has little expl explanations for everything. So I'm going to tell you, I want to show up to my first storm um, with knowing this right out of the gate. And it's not rocket science. This is, this is something that you're going to gain a lot of experience with when you, when you start looking at it with your eyeballs and you're like, okay, that's a hail hit, right? And you start seeing hail enough times and you can pick it out of a lineup very, very, very easily, very, very quickly. Um, this even shows like mechanical damage, like somebody took a hammer and went over a roof with it, right? Um, these are absolutely invaluable. This is the kind of thing, I like these books. Um, I've, you guys probably heard me talk about them, but I like these because I can have this, you know, especially if I'm doing a bunch of like comp roofs, this, this will go in my bag, my little bully bag thing. The contractor starts talking about, well, how can you say this isn't? And I'm just like, Sir, uh, I'll take a look right here. This is what we're looking for, right? And then you can, well, you know, I mean, hey, those guys, they're just shills for the insurance industry. No, no, no. I mean, what else are we supposed to use? I, I don't know what to tell you. This is what I, this is what we use. This company's been around for 100 years, like actually 100 years. Um, and that's what everybody uses. They, they say what hail is, and it is what it is. You know, there's no, it's not, there's not a question about it. Um, this is what I use to back it up. So also, you got a discount at HagueEducation.com uh, on all their trainings and books and all this stuff. Uh, that book is $39. For any, any place that you think you might be able to get a discount from Adjuster TV, code Adjuster TV. People, when, whenever I do a partnership with like Hague or Adjuster Pro or whoever, they're like, hey, what do you want your discount code to be? And I'm like, you want to do like ATV2019.65, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, no, no. Just make it adjust your TV. Let's just keep it simple. So again, they have like digital versions of them, which I think are, are they cheaper? Yeah, they're like $20 cheaper. Absolutely strongly encourage you to do this. This one's a, a good one to get. Um, tile, it's a good one to get. So educate yourself. You're going to learn a lot of stuff when you get out in the field, especially if you have somebody to, to uh, like a, field manager somebody that rides along with you and shows you some stuff um, contractors can show you stuff i mean they're not all like not to try to be bad guys so brad good question here um if you have a if you have a limit regarding how long you can be away from home example three weeks will that limit your opportunities as a property adjuster how would you approach that so typically the way most storms work with the exception i would say of hurricanes and maybe wildfires, um, storms where you're doing more like total loss stuff or like large, large loss. For a windstorm, strict, straight up windstorm, um, for ice dam or freeze claims or weight of snow claims, um, for sewer backup claims, uh, water claims like that, 
generally speaking, those um, at the most, you're going to be there for maybe three weeks, you know, 10 days, two weeks, depending on how fast you can close the claims they give you, because they know with those particular kinds of storms, like the windstorm, right, the tree hits the side of the house, there's no question, there's no like, four months later going like, Oh, gosh, honey, did you notice the tree piercing the side of the it's, they don't have that, right? It's you walk outside, we're following, we're calling our insurance and everybody calls at the same time, right? So they get 5,000 claims um, in St. Louis. They're going to send enough adjusters to that particular event where all, every adjuster can get at least 50, you know, 40 to 80 claims, right? Because they want to shut that thing down as fast as possible. So usually what happens is, unless you get put on cleanup, right, is that everybody gets 40 claims to start. And if you're fast, right, like I was, I might get another 20 claims and then do cleanup after 20 new claims and then do be, do cleanup on any of the other adjuster stuff or, and my stuff that like reopened later. I might be there for a little bit longer than that. But usually you're going to go on those, those storms and be there for a couple of weeks, three weeks, at, probably at the most. Um, hail, different story, right? Again, like we talked about earlier, hail is, you know, a lot of people don't know that the, the hail, hail hit the house. They were out of town, hit in the middle of the night. You know, it takes a while for the contractors to get around to their neighborhood and start doing, start canvassing their neighborhoods or start doing work. So nobody really knows until the roofers start, you know, knocking on their doors and climbing up on the roofs and taking, showing them pictures of their roof and saying, hey, well, sir, you've got it. You should file a claim. Or like the other example, you know, the neighbor, the, the guys are up there with the air guns, you know, all in a day. Well, how'd you get a new roof, Bob? Well, we had a hailstorm. Did you remember that? Yeah, I didn't think anything of it. File on a claim and, every, and it, it's, it starts off a new neighborhood, blows up, right? And that, that those storms can last weeks. Um, and they can last months, right? I've, I've been on the longest hailstorm I think I was ever on was, I think, like five or five and a half months or something like that. There is only one company that provides E&O and general liability insurance solely to the insurance industry, and that's Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance that you, as the adjuster, should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster tv so i'm not going to say that it's going to limit you necessarily uh especially right now um but if the, if you get called for a hail deployment you, you may be there for a while um or it's possible that you could be there for a while depending on how well you do so i i, I guess i could say that that would limit your opportunities because a, a lot of what you do as a, a as a field property catastrophe adjuster is going to be hail you know, one way to, to, to do this is to say, you know what, I'm just going to suck it up. And for one year, I'm going to do whatever they ask, right? Whatever, however long that they need me to be gone, I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to get that one year locked in. And w whenever they call you for anything, any kind of storm event, you just go and it's going to suck, right? Especially if you got like little kids or whatever. But then after that, you now have a lot of really good solid experience under your belt where you can turn around to your firms and say, hey, I want to stay home and do daily claims, right? I think, you know, I've got experience. I, you know, I worked that hurricane. I worked, you know, it was on that, that hailstorm for six weeks. I did the sewer and drain backup thing. I've got like a variety of experience and I don't want to do CAD anymore. I just want to do local dailies and then just slide into dailies. Um, it's a little bit of a different ball game because you kind of have to build up a little bit of a business of it depending on again where you live um with cat in a nutshell with cat they say hey we need you to go to st louis for hail for amfam it's pilot calling you you're only going to work for pilot doing those amfam claims you, that's like that's like a hundred hour a week job for one person right you do not like call crawford and be like hey uh, there's a hailstorm in uh, St. Louis. You think you could send me on it for State Farm or somebody not besides AmFam, and then work for another? You just you can't do that. It's, that's that's you'll immediately be discovered and it will be a me an immediate fail. However, for daily work, right? It's the toilet backs up. It's the refrigerator water supply line for the ice maker breaks in the middle of the night. It's 
fires, it's vandalism, it's random stuff, right? It's not like it's one particular event. So it's going to, they're going to trickle in, but they're always going to be coming in always. That's why you have homeowners insurances for this kind of stuff. Um, so pilot may be like, well, we can give you one claim every two weeks, right? Which, you know, if you don't want to leave, you say, okay, I'll do it. And then I'm calling Alacrity and Alacrity can give me two claims every two weeks. And then I'm going to call Crawford and Crawford's going to give me, you know, they can give me one claim a month or whatever it is. Right. And then just kind of how you build a business as a daily adjuster. You're going to be doing a lot of work for a lot of different companies. Um, there may be one company depends on, again, totally on where you live that may say, um, Oh man, we can keep you busy. We can give you 12 daily claims in a week is a high volume. 12 to 15. That's, that's high volume. So anything between five and 12 is all you really need to just really crush it as a daily adjuster um, if you're staying home because those claims are going to be a lot bigger, right? And you're probably going to be responsible for the, the whole long tail of that claim and not just like going to do the initial thing and just getting the first checkout and then going off to the next event, right? With daily, those claims you got in January, you're still going to have to deal with them in May, right? Um, so it's a, it's a different ball game, but you got to have experience to be really, to, to make that work. So that's why I would say, um, if you can, Brad, suck it up for a year, you know, for a season, you know, maybe next, starting like right now and then going until this time next year and then cutting it off at the end of hurricane season next year. Mike, uh, with NACA scheduled and tickets selling, would you agree that for anyone looking to get started or looking to get more work, it is the most cost-effective decision as an independent adjuster can make? I think it's absolutely critical that you go to NACA, whether you're brand new or you're, you're, uh, have a lot of experience, um, because the, all the major I firms are there. They're looking for people. Um, people often leave NACA with claims in hand of some kind, they, they could be daily claims or they may get a deployment. Um, it is the, the, I think, you know, you gotta have licenses. I really would, I really want you to show up to that with licenses and training and not just be like, well, if Matt said only do one thing, it's just go to NACA and you don't have anything else. It's not gonna be, it's gonna be a kind of a waste of time. Show up with this stuff and already on your resume, have your resumes all printed out take a little headshot, you know, of yourself and put it on your, on your resume so that when they're looking at these six weeks after the thing, they can be like, Oh yeah, I remember that guy. Hey Bob, what's going on? Yeah. yeah remember we talked about fishing and blah, 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 right. Instead of having just like some random name on there, no picture, they're not going to know who you are. Well, they may not know who you are. I wouldn't know who you are because I'm, I'm kind of bad with names and I can give faces no problem, but it's like putting names back to the faces that I have a challenge with. A lot of people have that that issue, so resume picture on it, um, and then have have a good set of licenses on there. You've got plenty of time, especially if we have a hurricane in the next few weeks. Then you're going to have some experience on there, um, fast track to deployment, MoCat, whatever, right? But but have something on there that you can show and be like, I'm ready to do this. I got skin in the game. Um, I paid for licenses. I paid for training. I've got Xactimate level two. I'm ready to, to do this. I'm an adjuster. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to make this happen. I'm ready to help you do whatever you guys need to do to be successful. And that's what I would do. You know, you can't handle claims without at least one adjuster license. Get a discount on your property claims adjuster licenses at adjusterpro.com using Adjuster TV at checkout.